Hello and welcome to a, your prime time telecast pre-scheduled programming that we have been doing live for more than four months. Hundreds of entrepreneurs, thinkers, wealth creators and people involved in the creative mind space of this country. The agenda has been singular to get their pulse communicated to mainstream India. What do we now need to still do to fix ourselves, pull us by our own bootstraps and get this boat of India going? And more importantly, as far as we at here in NewsX are concerned, for all of us to buy in to the India story, we have to buy in to Indian wealth creators. These are some of the finest people in the world doing fascinating and great things. Let us introduce uh, our panelists uh, for this particular discussion. Mr. Amit Vadwani, who is MD and co-founder of SECPL, Mr. Rakesh Shukla, Managing Director of Scope India Private Limited. Mr. Srinath Sridharan, who is an independent strategic counsel. He's also a markets commentator. Ms. Radhika Batra Shah, founder and tea sommelier. She works with uh, and runs Radhika's fine teas and whatnots. Mr. Siddharth Batra, advocate on record at the Supreme Court of India. Ms. Gina Arthiva, founder of the Conscious Music Code. And as always, the editor-in-chief of Business World joining us on the broadcast. Dr. Batra, set up the conversation for us, please for doing this every day. I think uh, while there is uh, political issues like the Bihar elections that were announced today, and in some way the Bihar elections will uh, test the faith uh, that the India has in Modi, it looks very strong, uh, and the child, what's happening on the border. Uh, but what is also important, as you rightly said, that the, you know, COVID is a health issue, but it has become a livelihood issue for a lot of people. And only Indian entrepreneurs with their ideas, with their innovativeness, with their resilience, can uh, realize the Prime Minister's dream of being Atmanirbhar, that is self-reliant, and also building the new India, which hopefully will be a five trillion economy soon. So let me, um, uh, today we have guests from all sectors. Let me start with Srinath Sridhar. Uh, Srinath, uh, you were the CEO of a large financial services company. You made investments in fintech companies. Tell us, uh, uh, what is happening in the fintech landscape and how is it enabling both India and Bharat? Uh, what is it doing to the rural economy? Because traditionally, uh, the, uh, the branch penetration of banks was very, very low in India. Fintech in some way and, you know, lending companies, fintech lending companies are in some way bridging that divide. So tell us what's happening to rural India and obviously to India. Uh, thanks, Sadurag. Uh, thanks for having me on the show. Uh, fintech or any disruptive themes that we are seeing, India is not only going through the disruption of uh, the COVID, but uh, we also have, we have always had the divide of India versus Bharat, which has become more pronounced uh, in the recent times. Uh, we saw a huge uh, exodus of people moving away from the cities back to their hometowns and uh, struggling in between. Uh, and if you look back the last couple of years, one of the structural change that we have had, which is very, very positive change, is the Jam Trinity. The Jandan, the Aadhaar and the Mobile. Today, every Indian citizen or most of them have this Trinity. The fact is that it helps us to disrupt, this helps us to connect every Indian to the mainstream finance, financial world. Let's say if you take the case of financial access, we have been speaking about financial access, we have been always saying that India is underbanked or uh, not banked at all in a lot of pockets. But this particular access, uh, digital trinity, allows us to bring every citizen to mainstream. All of us on this panel have access to uh, bankers. So we get uh, more choices. I think true financial inclusion is when we have choice, when we have choice of products and services to choose, and the freedom and the independence to choose what we want. So I think fintech, in reality, I think there are lots of work that is happening. Capital. Equity capital is chasing fintech entrepreneurs for the last few years. Uh, it will be uh, not, uh, let's say, out of place to actually say some of our conventional brick and mortar financial services firms, including banks, are far undervalued than the fintech companies. The fintech companies have showcased that they are able to bring in more capital in terms of valuation rather than these conventional brick and mortar. But that's where uh, my positivity pauses. The, the fear I have is this. I think in our policy space and regulatory space, there is almost a sense of uh, hierarchy, unsaid hierarchy. Banks, non-banks, microfinance, and then fintech. 
uh, it is not a level playing field as we see it. The fact is, if somebody has the ability to bring in capital, uh, prudent measures and risk capital, uh, and of course with the governance line, I think we should be able to do more about finance. But today it is not a level playing field. Can we make it a level playing field and make it inclusive? I think we have a fantastic mode in terms of the jam trinity. I think this is the best thing that India has had in the last five years. Srinath, let me ask you this. Uh, you were on the show two months back and we talked about uh, how it is a credit issue, how it is a liquidity issue. And banks have been very, very conservative. We've had entrepreneurs on the show who shared how conservative the banks have been in terms of lending. Uh, and it hasn't changed in July and August too. Do you see this changing going forward? And what will be the impetus for banks to really lend? So I think uh, it, it cuts both ways. Uh, as the situation changed, no. Uh, do we blame the bankers? No, not really. The, one of the biggest important dates is going to be next week, Monday, when the Supreme Court hears the moratorium case and has a view on it. Uh, there are, I think, two ways it could go. The capitalist way or what I call the inclusive way. Inclusive way is in that you feel that you want to do something and somebody has to pay a price for it. It could be the banks or it could be the government or a combination of both. I think that will come out next week. But the reality is this. If today in a full lockdown or a partial lockdown that we are seeing, even if you give an entrepreneur money, uh, they are not sure whether their business is viable anymore. I think some of the test of viability of business, will know, we will know only when uh, the easing of lockdown happens further. Yeah, the good, but when the moratorium goes away, uh, we'll know who's swimming naked, so to say. Uh, uh, it, that's true, but it is not over. Because end of the day, uh, you will have the moratorium, you will have the, there is a pause on the IBC. For the next three months. Uh, so the real pain is going to be known after that. And Sinat, on 1st October also, the GST of 1% on e-commerce kicks in. And you know, um, it kind of has a cookie cutter approach that everyone who's an e-commerce player, whether they're a small Kirana merchant in my colony, has to pay on any e-commerce uh, that store does, they have to pay 1%. And in some cases, their margins may not be that much. So True. while it impacts larger players with deep pockets, uh, but it doesn't enable uh, you know, smaller players to go online, it is a disabling. So what is your view on that, Srinath? That also is applicable from 1st October. We are six days away from it. Hopefully, the government will reconsider it. But for now, it is there. So right now, as we speak, I mean, hope and faith is all that we seem to have. They say hope is not a plan. But let me go to real estate. I think real estate sector is seeing a lot of new activity. In August, Bangalore, Residential sales came back to pre-COVID levels. Uh, Bangalore has started to see two-hour traffic jams, which is an indicator of economy setting. Sadly, that's the indicator we look at whether the economy is back. Amit, uh, Amit Wadwani of Saige State is with us. Amit, uh, you were in the show two months back. Has real estate started moving in a big way, especially residential? So hi, uh, good evening. Good to have you guys uh, here and uh, thank you, uh, Anurag sir, uh, to get me on the show. But you know, uh, answering your question, I feel uh, Indian real estate in terms of uh, sales needs to come back, uh, bounce back. If you see transactions happening and money moving from the real end users and consumers into the developers' bank accounts, expression of interest somewhere scheme underwriting and those things are out of the box now so you can't really accept a 5000 rupee eoi or a 50000 rupee eoi for an apartment which is going to cost you about 10 million for that matter even say 5 million us dollars uh, so uh, a lot of numbers coming in from down south uh, west bengal uh, ncr and mumbai would uh, possibly be deceiving because they are actually indicating the number of bookings made possibly which is not even say a fragment of what the total transaction will be i would be interested to see if how many home loans are dispersed how what, is your, what is your with you you're a large player in the transaction space in the uh, you know affordable housing and yeah. you know in mid-market housing yeah. what are the trends currently what has changed in the last two months or has anything changed uh, no, so if you if you ask me, the real definition of affordable is yet not defined. I mean, the way the finance minister defines affordable is not how people who really travel in the buses and the trains and who consume 
room this apartment they find affordable if you ask me real affordable is anything less than 20 lakh rupees 25 lakh rupees if it's mumbai delhi kolkata or bangalore for that matter and stock at this pricing is not available uh, that is one and uh, covid in fact to be very honest and give you a candid uh, opinion here is uh, has saved a lot of developers because of the moratorium because of because of an excuse that they can play now with the rare of the like, of various states saying that now because we have covid our projects will get delayed but the real uh, picture is that the product has now become outdated most of these projects uh, the product is outdated the consumers are finding it way 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 too expensive the banks are not really uh, pouring in more money to complete the project so the situation is only going to get worse and i feel that in another one and a half two years from now if the developers do not deploy sufficient efforts to liquidate by that i mean not getting in pes not getting in construction finance but focusing on real end users keeping the investors away you know uh, speaking the language that the end users would want to hear 2% stamp duty cut is not an advertising offer it is not enticing enough for an end user to to avail of a 2% benefit pricing He's has looking at 20% more palatable yeah and come out real talk real stuff you know when the stamp duty is 2% most of the developers in western part of the country are talking about zero stamp duty i mean come on everybody understands that two, stamp duty is 2 or 3% now the, de- the developers must come out and say that my product was at 50 lakh rupees pre covid post covid or during covid my product now is at 32 lakh rupees this will make sense this is what the indian consumers would want to hear and I possibly promise. possibly that is the only solution because a 25000 crore subsidy or reduction in gst or stamp duty is not something what the end users want what they want is a on time possession quality control meet your commitments real reduction in prices and they want somebody like an sbi or an li i see to give them the guarantee of possession because nobody is trusting indian developers this is the news from ground zero thank you amit for being so candid and giving us a realistic situation yeah. mr shukla <coughs> uh, you have the best of both worlds you're based in allahabad but you spend half of your time in delhi uh, what is your sense of where the economy is going and uh, when do you think it will be back in full bloom shukla ji mr rakesh shukla do we have you Shukla ji, you can still hear us, not. and we can get your video back in. Okay, I think we lost him there, uh, Anurag. Go ahead. Yes, yeah, so no problem. Let me ask Radhika. Radhika, you're an entrepreneur in the tea space. Now, food and essentials have kept us going. Uh, you know, and again, we're spending more time. You can see even two of the guests on the show are drinking tea. So tell us, uh, has your sector, and I'm talking of your sector, blossomed? Has the volumes of tea, tea grown? what has happened to your own business and uh, how do you see the future radhika okay good evening anurag and a lovely team here on the panel uh, on the outset what's happened is that uh, when the covid scenario started it was the time for uh, the indian tea produce and most of the world's tea produce to be harvested it's called the first flush and it commands a premium in the international market ironically that's the time the country was locked down Uh, having said that, we saw a loss of 2,000 crore this year compared to last year because of this lockdown. Add to that, the Assam floods uh, played havoc. Uh, the migrants from the gardens went back to base camp uh, because of the various infections. Despite all the safety protocols of most of the premium gardens, our exports uh, saw a decline uh, from about uh, 120 uh, kg million kgs to about 80 million kgs. so overall it's been a very big negative for the indian uh, tea sector and we are uh, the world's second largest producer of tea our darjeeling and our assam's command a pre- uh, premium in, in the international markets and none of it uh, could reach internationally because of the lockdown because of the uh, you know uh, uh, transport problems etc etc having said that uh, it's not such a negative scenario also uh, if you look uh, after these 6 7 months of lockdown and the slow opening of india and the international markets uh, because what has played well is the domestic market uh, essential goods did well and everybody missed their cutting chai because although there was no supply the demand kept increasing so as and 
sea price saw a huge rise of about 70% which has never happened before because uh, companies which so have the supply always... side scarcity led to a price increase exactly so uh, the good part is that entrepreneurs like us and uh, companies which are promoting sustainability organic produce uh, saw good we increased about 100% in sales uh, it's been about several years of my business where i've been promoting and advocating organic chai purity goodness of tea but suddenly uh, that whole over a decade struggle of explaining to the consumer has now paid good like uh, uh, you know somebody here said about uh, the viability of business now it makes sense to me that business is very very viable because this is the domestic consumer who's coming back and saying hey uh, give me organic tea give me organic food they are also checking on claims earlier everybody was organic but now e-tailers are making a point to check uh you know with the seller that are you just organic are you just making a claim or do you have certifications to back it up so the good part organic is that organic can be become important in the context of immunity also exactly you know it's good for the throat so it's good for keeping corona away and organic and certain blends of tea are good for immunity right yes it's also a trend so internationally uh, if you say yoga is awesome then our country believes yoga is great uh, internationally if they say turmeric coconut licorice tulsi is great then we say wow we even we want it that's that's so that uh, psychological shift the so mindset support, while i'm a tea drinker and now we we are a tea drinking country america is a coffee drinking country right. uh, tea is lesser but the largest selling drink at the starbucks is the turmeric latte the golden latte which yeah, is essentially exactly. turmeric in uh, in coffee right. turmeric in tea so exactly. you know uh, uh, the west of course discovers the benefits of what we have for many years much faster culture and food uh, yeah. faster and then True. we kind of adopt them you're so right about yeah. that yeah so so the good side of this uh, pandemic has been that india has discovered the goodness of something which was so innate dadi ma nani ma said have it but we never listened you know so now that has become an important part of our blends so we have turmeric we have mulatti we have tulsi so the good side of this entire scenario has been that domestic players are doing well and most of us have seen 100% sales over what we actually saw at this part uh, you know uh, in the 2019 So tell us uh, overall the tea industry. If suppose it was in February, March, hundred rupees in turnover. Where is it? Is it eighteen, nineteen, is it seventeen? Where is the tea industry? So right now uh, it's still very slow uh, because what happened was that uh, when the lockdown happened and uh, then the Assam floods happened, we thought we were great to go. and then again a, a lot of european countries shut down again with their mini lockdowns so we are still very slow we're looking at a 80 right now from 100 we we are still at an 80 right now okay so uh, that's compared to travel aviation restaurant which are at 0 or 10 uh your industry is doing well let me at this point bring in sadat batra sadat so uh, commercial litigation is likely to go on go up it has gone up uh Tell us when you talk to your clients who are entrepreneurs, what is the sense you get from them about where is business and economy headed? And since uh, you were on the show about two months back, what has changed? Uh, look, uh, Anurag, uh, if I have to be very frank about it, the sentiment is low for sure among uh, my clients who come, uh, companies uh, who are doing this businesses. Obviously, uh, their sentiment is quite low at this point. and yes uh, we are overlooking some litigation as well some litigation has already begun as uh, siridharan said that already a matter is before the supreme court now the gloves are off moratorium um, is off as well uh, regarding the ibc code also i do not know how long uh, will the government continue to protect businesses uh, from the ibc because uh, it's uh, that way a two edged sword if somebody is not paying the money and somebody is entitled to get the money then uh, it's it's two way i mean business both ways Thing. And uh, as far as uh, the coming up litigation is concerned, I believe uh, it, this rigor of uh, what we are going through the COVID-19. I think uh, uh, we had uh, we were earlier thinking that will be over by the end of this year, which we do not think so. The end is near. So companies do are planning, but uh, I believe a lot of contracts uh, because of force majeure or impossibility of performance are coming to an end. 
and litigation will slowly and gradually start to set in uh, the moment uh, companies settle and uh, things try to settle down. Okay, Siddharth, so I was talking to Mr. Abhishek Manu Singhvi, who is one of the finest jurists and is also one of the top paid uh, you know, legal eagles of India. And he said to me that when he talks to his businessmen clients, to his entrepreneur clients, the fee is because they are paying cap capabilities currently hindered, uh, the fees are practically 50%. This is none other than Mr. Abhishek Manu Singh we say. So how has lockdown impacted your practice income? Uh, and uh, tell us what is happening to younger lawyers who have smaller practices than you are. Uh, how are they keeping up with their livelihoods? Look, Mr. Singhvi is one of the top lawyers in the country. Uh, obviously, there cannot be any comparison between his fee and my fee. And I'm saying he even acknowledges that the lawyers have to take 50%, 60% fees because the clients cannot afford more. Look, I think it's become easier for him as far as he's concerned because he can appear pan India. What he charges is, uh, what is charges a lot of money. Uh, he may have reduced then uh, on his fee, but I believe he's getting more briefings for sure. But for the younger lot, yes, there's a great challenge uh, which uh, I believe uh, the legal fraternity right now is facing. Because if you see, uh, there are uh, two uh, uh, talks among lawyers as well, as what I experienced today morning as well. My case was listed today before the High Court for a physical hearing. The other counsels who were opposite to me were not ready at all. And if you see every now and then there are talks in the newspapers which are coming that lawyers are wanting physical hearing because they are not getting the right number of briefs. But uh, having said that, uh, obviously uh, for fee, every time a client will come to you, will say, look, it's COVID time, difficult time for us. Uh, we, we can uh, pay you a lesser fee or we will pay you later. Uh, they are uh, postponing the payment of the fee as well. And uh, with a, I believe uh, as far as real estate is concerned, real, real estate is struggling as well. All my real estate clients, uh, all the payments at, at this point are mm -hmm. on point. It's difficult. I, I, I'm surprised you're accepting real estate uh, clients at this point in time. Because, <laughs> uh, <laughs> I'm just giving advice to Siddharth on the show. You are there. Uh, Siddharth, you are, let me bring you into the conversation. You're a creative entrepreneur, you're a musician, you're a trainer. Now, um, physical events have come to naught. If not, there are limited weddings happening the limited uh, virtual events happening and the business model of virtual events is still not very robust. The values are low. Uh, so tell us uh, what has happened to you as an entrepreneur to your income and give us a sense of what is happening to your creed, to, to your community. Gina, to you. So, hi, thank you so much for inviting me to speak uh, today. Um, this is a very important question and I'm glad uh, I'm here to represent all these artists who have uh, literally everybody's gone back from Mumbai. The Mumbai uh, people who came to Mumbai with all uh, the dreams and hopes. Most people have gone back, except for the ones who already have a house or have a very strong uh, base. Old base, yeah. Uh, otherwise, people have gone back to their original cities. That's one. So obviously, there's no income. And as for the virtual events, the initial lot, what happened was. People just assuming that everybody was available for free. And most artists went online and started performing for free because they thought that's going to get them visibility. But what happened is that became the norm. And so when we spoke about virtual events, they said, charge to it was online. So they, they just couldn't digest it. Not that nothing is happening, it's starting, but it's very slow. But you know, this is a very important point I wanted to make today that this uh, right now in the field of creativity and uh, music and art, I feel this is the age of innovation. COVID is really another name for the innovative minds to come together or really if you're really that artistic and we're that creative, this is the time to come together and innovate uh, to create that new India. So in my case, I innovated a lot and completely transformed my life, which is why my income uh, wasn't zero. It could have been because that's what it looked like. On one day, I just lost, lost some four four bookings in one minute, just before the lockdown even got announced. So, um, what I did was I went always already had started my consciousness and music combination work. So today I have a mental health technology based on music, which I'm the first in the world to create. So. Um, 
that is not something uh, I, I, it's not just about talent it's about you know going to the through the tough days and just going into that pain and then creating something that empowers others and trust me it wasn't just about creating something it was also creating money for me somehow now people have finally realized that mental health is a thing you know and it has never been more important than it is today and uh, i know you were referring to donald trump that's why i think your mental oh health is black black <laughs> of mental health black totally but absolutely but that's another story my 10 year visa is done so i can crack it <laughs> thank god <laughs> but coming back to you uh, uh, dina Uh, you know, uh, IPL is happening. There is an opening yeah. ceremony, yeah. closing yeah. ceremony. Yeah. The matches, uh, Diwali is around the corner, and yeah. Durga Puja. The Puja yeah. economy. One of our most read yeah. articles last year on Business World site was on the Puja economy, yeah. the economy around Durga Puja. Now, yeah. what do you expect over the next three months? Uh, the artists should expect. Should they expect a twenty, thirty percent jump in number of uh, performances no. they are making? Yeah, number of performances. So number of performances, yes, because the moment the, uh, the puja, uh, at least in Calcutta, I was in Calcutta for a while while the lockdown was uh, more stringent, and the puja is not the same. You know, there's no physical uh, things happening. It's sad, but for artists, I I would predict that everybody would go live and start singing. So puja, the puja pandals will also go virtual. Go go virtual. and also they will spend their own money uh, to create songs for the navratri and durga puja uh, uh, hala blue and then they will promote those songs with their own money this is what most artists are doing you know but when you talk about events and what money is going to come in i don't expect anything great in terms of money but i do expect that there will be more visibility and again mental health of <coughs> artists will be slightly better because they'll be engaged in doing something okay but uh, it's all I, i again and again stress that for artists it's those who are going to innovate and who's going to come up with something totally new that are going to make the money okay. because well, otherwise uh, well well it hopefully it happens i'm just going to interject here before we need to take a very very quick break uh, just let me just yeah. go across the panel Uh, Amit Wadwani, you know how much of the realization what you were talking earlier that uh, we are still living on hope that a lot of people out there are still living on hope that something will organically come back uh, while they're waiting. Now I was told two three months ago that the government is very proactively, literally meaning ministerial level people telling builders that you now need to cut prices and get inventory now sold. Don't sit on it. How much of the realization is still on hope and how much has come down to practicality? No, so hi. Uh, this is, I think, I guess uh, you're referring to the conversation the builders consortium had uh, with the honourable uh, minister Piyush Goyal. Uh, uh, post that, also, in fact, there has been uh, a mood of uh, staying in the denial. So they are still not acknowledging that they they, they need to sell inventory, they need to uh, talk the digital language, maintain clarity, use better standards of uh, advertising, and reduce prices to ensure that they are not. continuing in the dead trap hmm. i still would want to bring this on record that 90% plus developers in the country are still offering gimmicks in terms of advertising uh, discounts or offering stamp duty off but the real trouble is something which they are so not so why why is it not happening is it is it not happening because too many business models have seen so much stress no, in the past few years because most most developers are not fit to be developers around the country because they have not done adequate market research before curating uh, projects uh, uh, around uh, uh, ncr and mumbai specifically uh and because of lack of uh, lack of research because of lack of knowledge because they have only focused on design technology tdr fungible land premiums but what an indian consumer wants whether he will accept this ticket okay. size whether he will accept the size so there is no research okay. there is no science are we plan. are we expecting a whole host to be cleaned out once again which already happened once uh no so i uh, till the time the, the 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 large developer consortiums do not really deploy efforts to uh, to to liquidate stock especially in the residential sector which is about 9.4 lakh crore of unsold inventory only in tier 1 and tier 2 cities i don't think 
the government or the banks can do anything at this point in time. Okay. The builders will have to help themselves out okay. by liquidating stock All right. organically. Okay, Shrinath Sidharan, is there a trick we are missing with the economy? Because we've had conversations now uh, over the stimulus that have happened. Right now, the focus is on legislation and the government priorities. I'm told that once the legislative agenda is completed, uh, uh, a further stimulus conversation is going to happen once again in the country. But is there a trick we are missing? So I think one, the government spends on the infra, which also gives uh, rise to uh, consequent employment across the country it has to start. I mean, we haven't seen a huge host of government infra, infra spends yet. I think that will be a trick that a government could use. But the fact is on the fiscal stimulus, I don't think our current shape of fiscal economy would allow any, any more room for more uh, expenses. Uh, the fact is, a couple of hours ago, SNP has affirmed our triple uh, B minus rating for the country. But they've also again uh, noted that there may not be headroom for any more fiscal stimulus. So that's under a uh, worry that we have. I mean, as it's a chicken and egg, uh, the economy is shaping up, then we might have more uh, GST revenue. But the fact is, host of industries are completely subsumed and have had no income or revenue base at all last couple of months. So where is the space? I think government spending on infra B2B could be Okay, okay. I'm told government spending is up 16%, but that's not going to be enough because the consumer demand is down so much that it doesn't really matter. Ms. Sridharan, uh, how, how long before uh, the GDP dip that we've seen, which is, which, is a, uh, which is a shutdown dip, becomes an actual organic dip which becomes very difficult to pull out of? If we don't see, uh, let's say, uh, any more uh, mishap uh, in the global economy, because we are all, uh, let's uh, be very pragmatic, the markets, the stock markets have been rising up with the hope about the vaccine coming up somewhere around soon. If, let's say, that gets delayed by six more months, so we are going to have a whole host of sentimental pullout uh, across outside the markets, and that's reality. Uh, our interest rates cannot go any more lower, even if it goes by, let's say, 100 bucks more. The fact is, if we continue like this for through this financial year, I think it becomes more uh, difficult to come out. One quick po case in point, it's easier to compound a positive upward, but it is very, very difficult when you're going in the negative and you're compounding. It's very difficult to come back to zero all over again. Uh, and that will become very, very yeah, challenging. Yeah, because then you have to grow at 15, 20%. Now, now there's a shutdown blip that can be V-shaped, and but it becomes organic, becomes a lot more difficult. Then uh, Sadat Batra, you know, is there a risk we are running that things have can get much worse or have we bottomed out now? Is this about how quickly we rise up? I do not think so. We have bottomed out. Uh, I believe uh, uh, till the time we have vaccine in place and uh, we have uh, the right results, uh, I do not think so. We'll bottom out uh, that early. People have already started saying that uh, two to around 21 will be affected as well. Hmm. And uh, I think uh, maybe the worst is yet to come. Uh, if you've seen uh, Bill Gates' statement, he says two, uh, if he go like this, 2021 is gone and then we talk about 2022. Uh, I'm hoping uh, that won't be the case. Uh, but okay, but sure, is, th is there opportunity hunting here? Because the, the reason the stock markets are so high is because there is a lot of money which is being pumped in and right now you can't put the money in a bank, you, you, know, you don't want to invest it, so people are dumping it into the stock market. Uh, today, I think your uh, FD, short-term FD rate is 1% or 1.5%, even in a high-interest country like India. So when you're dealing with clients, are they trying to see opportunities of restructuring, renegotiating contracts at better deals, better rates? Is something good coming of this? Absolutely. If you see any real estate contracts for that matter, any rent, lease, deeds, all uh, tenants are wanting to uh, have a better deal. Uh, I believe uh, in, in, in every... Uh, tenant lease, uh, even if you take the examples of uh, the real estate that we have in Gurga or we have in Noida, everybody is looking for a repackaging thing. And today we had another news that uh, Harley Davidson has pulled out of India as well. And if you see uh, Harley going back, I was reading that in fact they have restructured the whole thing as well. So once these major companies start to pull out as well and start to restructure, obviously I think my or most of my clients. Uh, uh, are re uh, reworking the deals uh, which they've already done uh, in, in positive times and I believe landlords also uh, to some extent are ready to uh, offer the olive branch they don't want the tenants to go as well okay uh, Radhika Shah uh, is there still a supply chain problem are you still having a labor problem or is it simply a, a, a getting the product out there demand problem Actually, uh, it's um, a vicious circle and it's obviously started with low produce, etc, etc, like I explained the onset. 
uh, but the silver lining is that uh, things are getting better unless something worse would happen uh, so no, can you can you explain that to us for right example now, is, is, it, is labor back is labor back are you being able to pick yes yes now? labor is back uh, labor is back at the onset of july itself okay uh, so transport that's, uh, transport that's is happening fine. transport packaging is happening now yes yes and export is taken off well because everything's opened up now the only jhatka one gets is that if there's a lockdown again internationally because like i said export is very big for the indian market hmm. so that should not pull us back okay so and what, what again, yeah go ahead anurag ji industry yeah. also gives a huge amount of employment correct so a negative growth of the right. tea industry could play havoc on the employment look at the tea gardens where you know uh, there is a manual picking of tea leaves It exactly. Okay, so I just want to pick up exactly on that because the argument, uh, Radhika ji, that is is made is being made, and and it's a relevant argument that yeah. uh, while our physical stimulus strategy and etc. etc. and reform strategy, uh, a lot of work still needs to be done. When it came to social justice, uh, we have prevented a total social collapse. That we have kept people fed. We have not seen famine areas coming. Uh, in areas sure. that you and and people who work around are operating, at least as that part, yeah. do you feel has been delivered on the ground that people have not gone hungry? Uh, depends from garden to garden. As far as our garden partners are concerned, because they are fair trade, that plays a very big role. So if you are fair trade, you are audited. So automatically, the producers become very vigilant and uh, responsible. Otherwise, their uh, audit might prove negative, and they might lose all their clients internationally. so as a norm in terms of being organic and fair trade this plays a very big role so yes uh, they are very well taken care of right from the onset when see uh, more, like anurag said most of the garden uh, pluckers are also migrants okay okay who are forced to go back and now they are back yeah okay so at least then so, at, at, no yeah. but at least if we have not created famine like situations then we have knocked off one thing of the of the ch- of the checklist and move on to the next last quick word before i take a break uh, exactly. uh, yeah you know you know jina you were mentioning that you have to be adaptive you're giving giving us your fir- own personal example but how much of this is just just survival uh, that you know uh, that we are surviving for another two months another six months after one year how after how long and what kind of consumer pattern needs to change for it to become a career not just survival uh the, are you talking about the in in uh, in adapting in the side or the innovation in, in side in adapting no, innovation and doing all things is, online is supposed to be yeah so this i'll say from both sides the side of continuing the way we were continuing looking for events and this and that to make money that side i honestly feel it's, it's really like a waste of time to continue to think that that is going to create some great revenue very soon it's not it might just increase a little bit but really the 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 smart people are innovating and when i say innovation i'm thinking long term i'm not talking about creating something just for survival i'm talking about creating something that mm. will be taking us to the next level better than where we already were yeah. so when that happens then that is the only future for artists from my point of view because i don't see them are uh, just coming and doing shows and suddenly revenues yeah because it's not happening the less. online model is not happening uh, you can it you can make a little it bit won't. to survive because on but you can't make anything thrive shina sridharan now that we are seeing elections restart you have bihar you'll have a huge one in bengal coming up in a few months after that tamil nadu coming up there'll be smaller ones bipoles taking place there was a complete cap shut on this and with elections comes government sops both at state and center generally sops are a bad thing in this regard we need sops as many as we can get is there an opportunity there i think so i think uh, we need more than just announcements we actually need to kick start some of these projects uh, so otherwise elections uh, generally bring in what i call as abc announcements banners and creatives uh, so what i mean it doesn't lead to the next one which is actually execution of those projects so i think can we get okay. there i think uh, do the state governments have the money most of the state governments are pressed for finances themselves Okay, state government certainly don't have the money. Do not, uh, yeah. do not, how do we go beyond ABC? Tell me, where in the September and October is starting? A uh, six months have gone away. What can the government do to kickstart the economy? What can be the second, uh, you know, stimulus package? Give us some salient features. 
See, one of the uh, largest one, whether we like it or not, uh, goes back to what Amit has been speaking about. Real estate is one of the largest employer, uh, unskilled labor as well as skilled talent across the country. And uh, real estate has been almost like the four letter word completely sh shut out of the economy or mainstream economy. And the challenges are these. Today we have RERA, we have GST that governs that industry. If we still don't want to actually uh, look at it openly, then the developers are going to go to what I call the off the record economy again, all over again. If the mainstream banks and finan fin financing institutions don't fund real estate, you're actually pushing them to uh, outside the mainstream system which again puts the projects at risk. Uh, you might have all the RERA that you want, but the fact is the consumers are at risk. So can we openly acknowledge that real estate is a real economy, it's an asset. Uh, just because uh, there have been some bad apples in the industry doesn't make the entire industry as a bad one. There are over 100 ancillary value chain industries connected to uh, real estate. I mean, of course, the government, including the state governments, are also beneficiaries of these from uh, the real estate sector. So pay, paints, be it paints, be it design sector, be it uh, cement, steel, iron. I mean, there's a huge plethora of industries. Okay. Just imagine what we can do. But can anything can anything be repurposed? Uh, Srinath Sridharan, we're talking about government now using thermal power plants, land banks to you know make industrial corridors. Can any of this real estate bank uh, be repurposed to any other any other objective other than setting up housing? We have a housing shortage in this country, and we have a housing surplus at the same point. We are stuck. See, the yeah, point is, uh, the, uh, where is the product and what is the actual product? Uh, the fact is, if there are no centers of, uh, let's say, economic viability, uh, and you build, uh, build a residential tower next to a thermal power plant, uh, except for those who are working in that factory, nobody's going to buy anything there. So what's the point in doing it? Okay. Uh, uh, very similar idea if you can apply to, let's say, the, uh, the Indian railways and the Indian defense forces. They're one of the largest uh, owners of real estate in the country. Correct. I mean, then you're actually talking railways. about viable projects. Railways, railways. Is the railways. second largest owner. Railways, yeah. absolutely. Defense is the largest owner, then is railways. Yeah. Okay. So I would like to, I would like yeah, to add, go ahead. Go there, is also a, a, there, there is also a major issue which nobody is talking about, is the product being outdated. You know, so real estate today, the way I look at it, is in the form of consumer durables or, or FMCG. So this is no longer an asset which you can buy today and then you know expect it to keep appreciating, keep appreciating without any math or science behind it. So today, I mean, you know, the faster uh, a new car or a bridge goes outdated, in the same way an apartment, its design, its location, uh, the quality of construction, all these things today are a big matter of concern. So we also need to understand whether this stock, which is almost about 10 lakh crore of stock, if we pour more good money over bad will anybody occupy these offices or okay these but what what can be amit eventually? amit what can be repurposed is there anything any scope opportunity there for repurposing? yes there is there is so if there is an uh, i will i will put it in bullet points if there is a real organic acknowledgement from the aggregators let me call them aggregators and not builders it could be contractors it could be nbfcs who have these properties as mortgages and are, and are trying to liquidate or builders should acknowledge that there is the need of a 40 percent 40 percent organic discount on ready products number two all under construction projects must only be allowed to communicate the facts as per the rera website because what I am allowed to communicate via advertising does not match what I am actually posting on my Rega website. And access to capital must more be from end users, not from private equity funds, not, not bailout packages. Yeah. But we need one macho effort for real buyers to come in. The salary slip guys, the guys who get paid salaries on time are the ones who will definitely jump in once we have a 40% cut in the stock which is exit, which is which is currently lying unsold around the country okay is is inventory clearing anurag batra an opportunity in in all it sectors real, not just real estate know, it is an opportunity but can can i tell you uh, they have outstanding loans they need to make repayments and uh, there also their valuation and loan against their property I mean, their own collateral. Now, if they reduce the price of that collateral, the loans they picked up 
So it's a it's a catch twenty two situation. Sir, at one point in time, uh, the banks are going to auction these properties, and then you will have to sell Absolutely. it at a price. I agree. So, so there is has to be a resolution. So it is better that the developers acknowledge that I am in trouble. Let me go to the market. Let me be honest. Let me offer a discount, and let's not be high handed. That the client has to come and meet me. The lala type days of doing development business is out of the window long ago. It's wake up time. It's September of 2020. So let's be more consumer friendly. We have 130 crore consumers waiting to buy your apartments, provided you speak the language that the Indian consumers want uh, would like to hear. Okay, we got a few so, minutes. Okay, so like, Anurag, we got a few minutes left here. Yeah. Go ahead. So let me ask them what I asked at the end of the show. This is a question to all the panelists. Two questions. what a short crisp and an absolutely direct answer like we've got today on the show from each one of you one when do you see the indian economy coming back in full bloom 6 months 12 months or more than 18 months second what is your one as rishab says what is your one lockdown lesson as an entrepreneur what has got added on to your way of doing business let me start with radhika batra shah first and go around the panelists When do you see the economy coming back? I'll answer the second question first, sir, because that's very paramount right now as we close. I think what I learned as an entrepreneur and in the F and B fraternity, especially the lessons that I see every day that most of us are learning is, and even Gina said in between, uh, your failure or any setback springboards you to success, and that's what most of us are doing in some way or the other through product innovation. So that's a lesson learned very well moving forward. Um, Anything worse coming in, we are ready to take in because you know we've learned a great lesson this time. And uh, secondly, um, I've always been very optimistic, so I'm hoping that we bloom back uh, like a kadak cutting chai very soon. Uh, but uh, looking at the numbers, figures, and all our discussions today, um, sometimes one tends to get a little pessimistic. So I'm not going to put a number, but I'm hoping for the good soon. Okay, we respect that. Jira Siva, when so, will the economy will be back? When will entertainers and artists, yeah. so to say, get the same level of revenue that they did pre-COVID? See, revenue is related to respect, and the respect for uh, live entertainment uh, has completely gone because they can't get everything live. So, I would say, I don't know which date is the right date. I think um, if we go the innovation way, which I've been stressing. uh then very soon then then it can happen today for my industry at least for the creative artistic so industry what you mean come back to the experience but it is not exactly. the same as yeah, being yeah but you can create business. yeah you can create technology based um stuff i would encourage artists to go in the technology field learn like uh, for a musician i would say learn music production don't just sing you know do things which are technology based and then blend something that you're really good at with what you have uh in technology and learn 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 till you get to that point where you can create the economy for this um for this industry rather than cribbing and complaining about kyun nahi ho raha kyun nahi ho raha and secondly the second question very close to my heart i will say three points one is innovation second is resilience and the third is the understanding of mental health which connects to every other topic that we've spoken to sure. the importance of the mind Siddharth so Sutra, when do you see the economy being back in full bloom, and what's your top lockdown lesson? I get my surname correct, Patra. Uh, yes. uh, you said Pluta. Uh, uh, so I see the moment uh, the uh, COVID vaccine we have. Look, yesterday I read in the newspaper Johnson and Johnson has come up with something which says vaccine in one go, because the other vaccine they are talking about are in two go. The moment we have a good vaccine in place, uh, lands in India. we need i don't know how many pieces a billion i believe uh, the moment that is there i believe the economy will kick start but i think people have to get in their mind that look uh, the end is near now people are losing patience uh, till the time we do not have a vaccine i do not think so things going uh, forward so the right answer is 6 months after the vaccine but we don't know when that right moment will come i don't as to see the economy today uh, where what's the time timeline mr siddharth batra you have for the economy to be back i hope i got your name right this time thank you sir uh, i do not say 6 uh, months actually uh, i say the moment vaccine steps in and uh, the moment it lands in india i think uh, indians are bullish people this way 
and uh, the moment we have something uh, that that we can foresee that is is coming so people will see the end near and i i think things will start to blossom out from there and what's your top down lesson uh, stay home uh, stay healthy uh, uh, i think the next uh, uh, future for us is uh, uh working from home i believe uh, there are things which are coming in place uh, you see evolution come in litigation as well uh, these days uh, we do virtual all the courts virtually virtual yes virtual e filing everything is uh, we are doing e filing i think everything is ev uh, evolving i think this change would have never come uh, if you would have not seen this covid is bringing an opportunity as well which we should take in, in the in the positive i think the way for litigation as far as i am concerned the way to go forward i believe is video conferencing for sure okay tell your saying technology merchant in delivering your service is becoming bigger in stuff whether you look at telemedicine you look at education you look at even the legal uh, you know services technology and virtual uh, behaviors are enabling the results online shinath chidran when do you see the economy back in full bloom and what's your top lockdown lesson top lockdown lesson is simple i think resilience uh, the ability for each of the human beings to uh, adapt quickly change uh, we have proved it very well uh, <clears throat> and also it is also hurting us uh, as we uh, unlock down or ease out our locking down uh, we are seeing uh, kind of pe people in at least the top 10 cities that i hear people are roaming around without masks uh, the markets are crowded and i call it the uh, from uh, the work from home we started off with uh, wfm and it's almost like we're back to wtf uh, attitude i mean we just don't care what the f uh, and i think that could hurt the economy no, far worse stand for mr shivan uh finance uh, that's something that we don't see in the economy oh, okay. we need <laughs> it thank you so much really <laughs> all all apply all right well uh, uh, all the but not the vision we yeah go ahead go ahead we need to get amit wadwani yeah 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 point of view Yes. Amit, uh, yes, when do they come? When do you think? No, no, sir. I, I think. I think. Uh, What's your top lockdown lesson? No, no. I think uh, we are trying to judge the ball before it comes onto the bat. So I think this period is a cabin divider between what uh, the world used to be and what uh, uh, the way the way we we have coined these terms called new normal. I look at at least a three to four year horizon for things to improve because the dent that the last three four months or six months. Uh, has cost uh, if we have to really be three to four years, I mean, yeah, three to four years before really you so have really the second most pessimistic no, person. I, I would, I would last no, week we had a guest who said five no, years. No, I, I would hate to say this, but you, you know me for the last about a decade. I am one of the most optimistic guys in Indian real estate or prop tech space. But if you really ask me. it is going to take 3 to 4 years for the indian economy to come back to where it is i'm hoping and praying that you are absolutely wrong in this uh, because yeah. it does yeah. impact all of us and what's the top of the we need to when we need to stop uh, living in the denial and we need to ensure that we all talk positively about the economy my top lockdown lesson i feel is a stop spending money on things that you don't require cut your cost ensure that your health is fine if you can lose if the promoters in the country the ceos in the country if, if people who take vital decisions can take care of their health uh, the lady here spoke about mental health and stop your borrowings because most of these banks are flooded with monies at this point in time the more you borrow the more it is going to be difficult for you once the moratorium gets over to repay and then you're going to be in a debt trap so most of these msme businesses will go down the drain if they keep borrowing so it is better to negotiate with your partners your vendors and getting get in more investors be it smaller chunks of monies rather than getting into this debt trap so these are my lessons okay. and uh, i Thank i really feel it's going to take about three years thank you yeah. okay clear that's pretty much as clear as the conversation as we managed to have uh, it's not over uh, but let's hope it doesn't become worse before it becomes better and for all of you out there the frustration is there we are all sick of it we all just want to get on with life but the risk is hitting us still we've already lost a sitting union minister just a few days ago we were having a conversation that he might be in line to be next chief minister of karnataka we have a delhi deputy chief minister who is uh, in a very serious condition in max hospital as we speak it's not over and uh, there is a cost that comes out of life also let's not discount that uh, For more such videos subscribe to the NewsX YouTube channel hit the bell icon